So last night, I had the amazing honor of attending the President Biden, President Obama, and President Clinton fundraiser in New York City. And fun fact, this fundraiser raised around 25 to $26 million in one night, which is more money than the Trump campaign raised in the entire month of February. That's right. One night, Biden raised more than the Trump campaign raised in a month. So that's obviously fantastic. But aside from the event being a total slam dunk, on Trump and his campaign's ability to raise some money, it was also so great to hear from those three men, from President Biden, President Obama, and President Clinton. They're so thoughtful, so intelligent, and so passionate about the real issues. Like, these three men genuinely care about what's happening around the country and around the world. They think deeply about these issues. And they're not just a passing thought like they are for Donald Trump. They actually care. But anyway, a lot of very important questions were asked at this fundraiser last night. Uh, But one that stuck out to me was when President Obama was asked, what kept you up at night during the Trump administration? And I managed to get an entire video of his answer. And so far, I haven't seen anybody post it, but I couldn't recommend enough listening to the entire thing. He is fantastic. He's so eloquent with his answer. And President Biden even chimes in at the end with some of his input on the matter. So the video is great. And uh, take a look at it here. Just made about... um how deeply that four-year stretch affected views of America around the world. Um, America is imperfect. We have not always abided by our founding documents. We, a civil war and enormous struggles were fought to try to perfect our union. And we, in our actions overseas, sometimes did not live up to our ideals. But what has always made America exceptional is this radical idea that you can get people from every corner of the globe, don't look alike, don't have the same name, worship, differently, speak different languages, have different cultural traditions. And somehow they're going to come together under a set of rules and we're all going to pledge that. That's our creed, that that we can live together, self-governing, have a representative government, peacefully transfer power, and that ideal matters. It matters to our children and their grandchildren, but it also matters around the world. When we see uh, a de-emphasis, when, when America is not forthright in speaking on behalf of those ideals, you see backsliding around the world. You see authoritarians emboldened around the world. You see aggression around the world because uh, there's no check and when we're living up to those ideals even in difficult times things feel a little bit better not just here but elsewhere people are a little bit more hopeful so what would keep me up up during those four years was um, how badly are those ideals tarnished The good news is, is that people still want to believe in those ideals. They want to believe in human rights. They want to believe in freedom of speech and religion. And and they want to believe in the idea that all people are equal, women are equal, and have the right to control their bodies. And you know, shouldn't be subject to domestic violence and girls should be able to go to school just like everybody else. And people of different sexual orientations should have the same rights and protections. And religious minorities and ethnic minorities and racial minorities all deserve the same respect and are afforded the same dignity as everybody else. Those those ideas, they, they, can, they, can, they can ebb and flow depending on what happens in the White House. 
And um, the good news is, is that we had a, a period of time where those ideals were not just de-emphasized, but were violated. And then we have somebody come back in who says, no, no, that's, we do believe in it. This is what America's about. And that's the same test that we're gonna be undergoing over the next eight months. Do we in fact believe in those basic ideals? And if we do, not only are we gonna be okay, but the world's gonna be okay. You know, one of the things, Brock, Think about this, this is not hyperbole. We are the most unique nation in the world, in this sense. Every other nation was founded based on geography, ethnicity, religion. None of, that's not us. We're, we, we came about as a consequence of an idea. An idea. No, I'm serious, think about it. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men and women are crazy equal. And down by the good, we, that's what found, that's what the basis of our existence. That's what found, that's what we found. We didn't, we haven't always lived up to it. We've never fully walked away from it. Until now, someone's contemplating walking away from it completely. Our diversity is our strength. Is the reason why the rest of the world looks like. Yeah, I mean, that was so well said, and I think it really echoes a lot of the concerns that many people have, including me, and I'm sure you as well. It's like, what was America standing when Trump was in office? What did our allies think of us? What did our adversaries think of us? And it's very concerning. It's very concerning. Like in the United States, we believe in fundamental rights in freedom and democracy. We believe that a woman deserves the right to choose. We believe in science. We believe in fighting climate change and that people should have access to health care and that everybody should be able to go get a great education and have a fair shake in life. But what happens when an authoritarian, demagogue, dictatorial lunatic like Donald Trump gets into office and they no longer believe in those ideas. The White House is no longer trying to protect freedom, not only at home, but abroad as well. Well, we saw what happened during the Trump administration. We saw the chaos around the world. Like all of our allies, all of our fellow democracies out there were laughing at us. They were saying, how on earth could they elect this man? How on earth could they let him do the damage that he's doing? But our adversaries, like Kim Jong-un and Putin, they were having a great time. They were on top of the world. They were emboldened because now the United States and their president is in line with their vision for the world. And that has a lot of negative effects, not only on the country, but as President Obama said, when the United States, the shining beacon of democracy around the world, is no longer believing in these fundamental rights and these fundamental freedoms, other countries around the world will backslide because we're not there. There's no check. And again, this is not a hypothetical. We saw it. This actually happened during the Trump administration. All these authoritarian dictators popping up around the world, winning their elections because the president of the United States was on their side, echoing the things that they were saying. So not only were our rights in the United States being taken away one by one under the Trump administration, but it happened around the world. All of these other leaders felt like they had a mandate to do it now because the president was in line with them. And let me just say this, thank God for President Biden. You know, who occupies the Oval Office matters, who's representing the United States on the world stage matters. And we had Trump in there doing whatever the hell he wanted, just going around saying, I'm gonna do what Trump wants, not what's good for the American people. But then President Biden clobbered him in an election and now we're back on the world stage. We care about these rights, we're fighting for these rights and we're making the world a better place. And that's why 2024 is so important. And that's why that fundraiser last night made me even more confident and sure that President Biden needs to be reelected in 2024. I didn't think I could get more sure, but listening to these three men talking in depth about these issues and talking about things that impact me and you just further proved to me the need for President Biden to have four more years. And last thing I'll say on this, because I know it's true for me and I'm sure it's true for a lot of you as well. Do you remember that feeling during the Trump administration of waking up every single day worried about what Mango Mussolini said on Twitter last night, what leader he insulted, what damage he caused around the world, what chaos he spurred at home? It was a terrible feeling, a terrible feeling. And it wasn't just us doing that here at home in the United States. It was people around the world who felt that exact same thing as President Obama stated right there. So what a fantastic answer. I would highly encourage sharing this video and that answer with friends, family, and loved ones because I really believe that every American 
needs to hear it before the election in 2024. And once again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment down below. I really want to hear what you guys have to say about Obama's answer and what you think about my opinion on the matter. And as I always say, please keep the faith. We got this. There's so much going around the world. There's so much need to stay involved. And I'm confident that if we do the work and we stay together, we'll get what we want done in 2024.